Hey everybody, welcome back to Spiritually Speaking Podcast. Today we are going to review the Angel Art Diary entry of the River of Forgetfulness. We're going to find out why we don't remember who we truly are and why or how we can get back to learning exactly that. Stay tuned, I'll be right back. Welcome to Spiritually Speaking Podcast. My goal is to teach you the elements of spirituality that will show you how to find your passion and purpose in life. I'm your host, Lisa Maria. So join me in another session of Spiritually Speaking. Welcome back, welcome back. Thank you for sticking with me on this journey through the Angel Art Diary sessions or sessions or entries. They're more like sessions if you want to think about it because they are therapy. And that's why I bring them to you because they give us a map. It's a map of how to navigate through this big bad world called Earth. So today... I have a drawing that I drew on, uh, I'm going to get the date for you, on August 2nd, 2010, okay, and again, I just realized recently what this was by reading other books about it. In fact, I believe I told you about this book in my last session, it's a Starseed Guide, And it is Andromeda, Pleiades, and Sirius, Volume 1. It's free on Kindle Unlimited. It also has a second volume that I am just starting to read. So it's a star seed guide, Andromeda, Pleiades, and Sirius, Volume 1. Excellent, excellent book if you want to learn where we came from, why we're here, and I'm going to tell you why we're here right now. I am going to actually read to you from this book a little bit of information that actually explains this angel art entry. And I was blown away, people. Blown away. Because as soon as I was reading this stuff in this book, this is the picture that popped in my head. And I was like, oh my god, that's what it was. And on the actual drawing... I have, it says, remember, remember, remember. And then it's, and then I have written on there, the river of darkness. So that is telling me that we had to cross over, go dark, pretty much. You know, our minds had to go dark or our memories had to go dark and forget who we were. So that's what this actual angel art entry is about. It's about trying to get back to who we were. And that's the point of this life, is to get back to who we were. To remember how strong and how powerful we are. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to read a few parts of the um, of a section in or from this book, and it says, how did we get here in the first place? So let me read this to you. Bear with me, okay, because this is really, really interesting. And if you're already on your uh, spiritual transformational journey, this will resonate with you, and you'll know why you feel like you don't belong here. Because I never, since I was a kid, Never felt like I fit in. I was, I was not, I mean, I was fine in school. I, I wasn't, you know, teased or anything like that. I was actually part of the more popular crew. But I still had this emptiness inside me. Like I was searching for something, you know, and, and it's a hard feeling. And I want... I really want to reach out to any of the teens out there that feel that way, feel like they just don't fit in. I never even felt like 
I fit in with my family. You know, I felt like the black sheep all the time. And I actually used to call myself, I'm the black sheep. My brother was the good sheep, you know. (laughs) So let's get to this section. How did we get here in the first place? Once upon a time, you were, we all were, a part of the infinite God's energy. Imagine that you were oneness and peace without any separation. You had no form, no physical body. You were just God's oneness energy. At some point, God allowed your soul energy to separate a little so that you may experience all the wonders of the universe. You loved it, and you became more curious with each discovery. You wanted to experience more, and that meant lowering your vibrations bit by bit and separating yourself from the oneness of God. The original separation started as soul groups, and I want you to picture clusters of light separating from one big sphere of light, okay? That'll give you an idea of what that means in soul groups. At this phase, your soul felt extremely peaceful as you did not know yet the feelings of love, excitement, safety, or fear. Suddenly, you became aware that there were other feelings than just eternal peace. And as a child of the divine, you followed your curiosity. Fascinated with each new discovery, you slowly lowered your vibrations more and more until you reached the realms of the ascended masters and the angels. Now, let's stop there real quick. If you re- if you listen to my uh, podcast about archangels and the choirs and the hierarchies, this will show you that the angel hierarchy is the lowest hierarchy or choir that there is. And this is why the Bible says, do not pray or bow or, yeah, do, uh, pray or bow to angels because angels are the same as humans. Okay? So, let's get back to where we were. Okay. So, as we were fascinated with each new discovery, we slowly lowered our vibrations more and more until we reached the realm of the Ascended Masters and the Angels. You became a light body and experienced unconditional love and universal wisdom. Spellbound, you wanted to experience the colors and energies of tones and sounds and the body of the Merkaba. So you lowered your vibration a little bit more. I want you to hold on to that spellbound because in future episodes, I'm going to refer back to that, okay? Because I have a drawing that shows a witch, which is really crazy, okay? I mean, this stuff is baffling me too, people. It's crazy, you know? It's like everything's just coming together, So as we did that, okay, so we lowered our vibrations a little bit more. Then we discovered 5D lives and incarnated yourself in extraterrestrial form on various planets such as Pleiades, Andromeda, Sirius, Centaurus, Arcturus, and others. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing some of these things because they're, I'm not really good at that stuff. But it was an exciting and mesmerizing time for you. When we reached 5D, you started to have various emotions. Your soul became aware of your whole self as a form. And you developed identity, personality, and found your soul's purpose. You started to feel needed and you were curious. You also learned you could consciously manifest and control the outcome of situations. Okay, I'm going to repeat that. You learned that you could consciously manifest and control the outcome of situations. This is a power that we have as human beings. Over a long period of time, you were slowly forgetting about the place where everything was complete. 
where there was no soul's purpose, no emotions, where there was just peace. Before you left God's oneness, you received a gift. Part of God's spark is within your soul, illuminating your path back home when you are ready to return. Prior to your first incarnation on earth, your soul spent a considerable amount of time in the 7D, 6D, and 5D realms. So much time that someone who is able to read your energy can recognize the energy imprint of your particular star nations and pinpoint where you are from and how many times you have incarnated into star nations and your soul strongly identifies with one or more of these nations, their teachings, abilities, philosophies, and ways of life. All of this is encoded in your DNA. It's part of your soul. Okay? Now, this is the part. It's called the Rainbow Bridge. And this is where the um, river of forgetfulness comes in. Before you came down to Earth, you stopped on a bridge in the 4D realm. It is a passage from the higher worlds of celestials into the physical world of Earth. It is a place that has past, present, and future energy. What a thrill that was to us at the time. There were patterns and repetition and battles of powers between light and dark. You stood on the bridge between 4D and 3D. Okay, 3D is where we live now. This is where the earth. And were captivated by the 3D world of emotions, drama, fear, chaos, jealousy, greed, and power. The emotions were fascinating and you wanted to go down and experience how it would feel to have a physical body. You saw primitive animals and wondered how it would feel to be like them, to have skin or fur or to run like a cheetah or to have feathers and fly like a bird. Eventually, now listen to this part, you were instructed that you could only use the Rainbow Bridge to return to 4D with all your memories, but not allowed to use it to go from 4D to 3D. So we could come back over the bridge from 3D to 4D, but we couldn't go back and forth at, at our leisure, is what it's saying. So instead... For us to go from 4D to 3D, we would have to go across the river of forgetfulness and forget all that we knew of our true origin. We had no idea that we would become stuck in this ongoing loop. Now you tell me that is not some deep shit. Okay, the loop, the ongoing loop that they're speaking of is speaking about karma it's about lessons karmic debt see to get back to our origin or origin or our true origin is what they're speaking of we have to learn all the lessons and that's why we constantly meet people that uh, are abusive because there's probably something in a past life that you were abused and you haven't learned the lessons of making yourself worthy enough and having enough self-love that you don't deserve to be treated that way. Okay, that's just one example of millions. Okay, now the Akashic Records is how it is tracked. That's how our lives are tracked. That's how we, or they know whether we have remembered everything by the lessons that we have learned. And to stop that karmic debt or that ongoing loop, we have to get back to our light. We have to find that spark within ourselves. And we have to expand that spark into a bubble of light and reconnect with our soul groups. 
We want to get back to that big, giant sphere of light is what we want to do. Just a reminder as well, all these angel art entries or angel art diary entries are drawn from what I saw inside crystals. Okay, and if you listen to my last podcast about the crystals, you will understand more about why there are things inside crystals and how you can actually see them yourself. So let's go on to the drawing. Okay, I've written some notes about some things that I've saw, I see in there or have seen. Okay, first I want to go over some phrases that were there. So close to it. Just a reach away, but how far from it? Away from that divine doorway. There you go. There's one part. Then it says reflections of light. What you hold in your heart, you hold in your hands. And then I have light with exclamation points on it. Now, look at the drawing, okay? There is a big, dark, colored in black, you know, circle similar like a square circle just a shape and it has a whole bunch of golden or yellow lights inside of it some have blue and green around them some have green and red some have just green or just red okay some have blue some have arms that are reaching out some have uh, energy that's being shined out from them okay this is showing the different I guess um, what am I trying to say here uh, I guess the different levels of where people are in the human like how how their spirituality is like what level you're on in other words okay or how enlightened that's it how enlightened that you are or people are Okay, then it shows a big red heart and it shows a larger person like with their arms and head and body, upper torso, reaching out to other lights that are on what I, what I see as a boat. Then there is a dark symbol which with a head and a torso that is underneath the boat and colored in red. Actually, now I'm seeing more than one. I'm seeing a few people underneath the boat. Now, the lights, all the yellow golden dots that are on there, circles, are us as our spark of light or a sphere of light. Okay? Some have arms that or energy reaching out to other people, which shows healers. How are you going to help other people reach their light or their get their sphere of light? Okay. Then there's some darker that are stuck in the earthly materialistic ways. And the red shows underneath the boat, it's all kind of scribbly looking red, shows the energy of the earth, which is materialism, power, money, greed, you know, uh, unforgiveness and all that. That's what the darker people show, uh, the darker symbols show. Then you have some that are on their way to enlightenment, which are the little spheres of light that are in the boat. Okay, and then again, the person in the center is reaching out to these people and helping them. This, I, you know what, it just hit me. This is also symbolizes uh, spirit guides. Okay, because if you look behind that sphere or that, I'm going to call it a person. Actually, I'm going to call it a spirit guide because it has a torso and arms and it's reaching out. So let's just call it a spirit guide for conformity reasons. And behind that is a gate. Okay, it's it's like a a gate look and it's just like a square uh, with an opening like a doorway. But it looks like a shattered doorway, like it's been ripped or torn open. So this is us ripping through the materialistic or human side of us and getting through. Now, we came here to help change the mistakes that we made in the past. And this goes back to Atlantis. 
where all the power and hierarchies actually started or government. We had to forget who we were so we could come here to learn all over again. We had to experience things as if we didn't already know them. We had to come back and do it all over again in the physical body. And the ongoing loop, again, we have to keep doing it over and over and over until we learn the lesson from that specific experience. That is how the karmic circle started. It's from the first, I don't want to say mistake, but I want to say the lesson. The first thing that we did here on earth. And again, going back to the ongoing loop, when we came here, we didn't know that we wouldn't be able to get back. We had to go through it over and over and over again. So let's review it real quick. The yellow lights are us crossing over the darkness, the universe, to come here. That's The darkness is forgetting. The red is the earth, the physical or materialism, you know, all the earthly stuff. The green door on the top has a doorway with light behind it. If you look around the edges, there's some golden light. That is what will take us home. That's the doorway. That it has two things here. We, that's the way the boat is coming from, which is where we came from. And that's where the light. That's also where we need to get back to. But the boat is showing us coming to earth, which is the blue on the outside and the green in the center, where the green in the center and the blue is on the outside on the other part. The green is showing the healing aspects. Okay? The blue is showing emotion. So... The green doorway up top has a doorway with light behind it, which will take us home and shatter the illusion of materialism. The key that is in the center, which is the big heart with the um, golden stem, which is what the, the, the spirit guide has their hands on, that's, the, that's what it symbolizes the key. And that key is to open our hearts to our divine selves. Now, I want to tell you what the pit, when I took the picture, I was holding the crystal. If you look, the bottom, the blue and the, the blue on the outside and the green in the center, that's actually my thumb. <laughs> the top one is my index finger. Just so you know, and, and it's, uh, holding the crystal in my hand was showing me everything I needed to remember from crossing the river of forgetfulness. This is reminding us that we are reflections of light. We are divine sparks of light and need to look deep within our own hearts to remember who we are and where we come from and the power that we have within ourselves. Now, one last note about this and, and this is something that might be difficult for you guys to see unless you actually have opened some clairvoyance within your, yourself. The word key is spelled with the lights in the center of the darkness. The boat that I described, then one of the arms and the key is the K and there is the E is part of the arms as well and then the Y is it kind of laying over top of it. Now, it's spelled out with the light or the golden light in the center of the darkness. And the heart is sprouted out or spraying out of that word. So, what is the key? The key to getting out of the darkness and releasing the karmic shadows and and materialism and for unforgiveness that follows us around and haunts us every day of our lives, what can we do to set our hearts free, to remember who we are? It's telling us right there that the key is love. Love everything. Love yourself. Love those who have hurt you forgive those that have hurt you because we are all on different levels of learning and if you continue to hate 
continue to belittle people or continue the drama, continue the chaos, we will be stuck in this darkness. And every single one of us is important because we have to come together, bring our lights together, and create that giant sphere of light so the other higher realms can come in to help us even more. Love is the key. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I know it was a little deep, a lot of information, but trust me, if you look at the picture and just really look at it with your third eye, not your physical eyes, meditate on the picture, on the drawings, you will see what I'm talking about. I promise you. I can promise you that. And if you can, if you need help, I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you regardless. I want to know what you guys think about the Angel Art Diaries. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you see. Because there's a lot of, I'm learning too. So there's a lot that I might not see within these drawings that I need you to tell me. That is the point of us all coming together. So I ask you, will you remember? I'll talk to you in the next podcast. Love you all. Namaste.